The specter of threats Singapore faces as a small and vulnerable nation means the total defence concept will remain relevant to the country. The Defence Ministry says this will continue even as the total defence concept celebrates its 30-year anniversary this year. And while the scope of total defence may be expanded over time, the spirit behind it will remain consistent. Dylan Lowe has more in this week's Spotlight. mention national defense and this usually comes to mind. Soldiers from various vocations training to prepare for armed conflict as part of Singapore's military conscription system. It's the muscle of the country's total defense strategy. Military defense is about enhancing Singapore's peace and security through deterrence and diplomacy. I myself was a conscripted serviceman, having spent about two years in the army before passing into the reserve pool of Singapore's civilian soldiers. The rough and tumble of military life has taught quite a few lessons, the most valuable of which I personally feel was that no man is an island, and whether in battle or at rest, you'll need to count on those around you and also be someone others can count on. And while those in green protect the nation from potential aggressors, those in blue stand ready to act during other emergencies. The Singapore Civil Defence Force provides assistance and critical assets in times of crisis. They support the civil aspect of total defence, which is about ensuring Singaporeans know what to do in times of civil emergency. But beyond the men and women in uniform, the total defence concept is about every Singaporean doing their part for the nation. Economic defence is about maintaining the country's economy and its ability to compete in the world, and ensuring it doesn't collapse in times of crisis. A key part of this is helping Singaporeans stay relevant in the global economy. That's what Helen Lim and a team of consultants from Silver Spring are doing. The social enterprise seeks to help displaced workers aged 40 and above rejoin the workforce. Chatter's Cafe is part of their efforts. It only hires mature workers. The youngest is aged 53, with the oldest at 70. As a member of Singapore's pioneer generation herself, 67-year-old Helen believes workers are never too old to contribute to the economy. When you, people can get back to work because even they're out of job, they have to dig deep in their pockets you know, for their daily livelihood. But when they can get back and feel that they can contribute and, uh, and become financially independent, it's for themselves and for their family and for their future uh, uh, retirement as well. So this economic uh, aspect is so important. Social defence is about keeping the social fabric strong and ensuring that Singaporeans of all races and religions can live in harmony. And Madam Kamisa Atan is an example of a Singaporean looking out for those around her. The 57-year-old housewife is part of a Community in Bloom initiative, which promotes gardening as a platform for interaction among heartlanders. <laughs> Madam Kamisa joined the program when it began in 2005 and travels all the way from Bukit Panjang to Jurong to meet her friends and exercise her green fingers at a rooftop garden where fruits and vegetables are grown. When harvested, the vegetables and fruits are distributed among members of the gardening interest group and also to residents in the Jurong community. It's a way to give the people living here a stake in building social bonds by partaking in meaningful activities. Some elderly are lonely, and then they, they come down to the garden, they chit-chat, they sometimes argue about the plants, who can, you know, who can grow better. But in, in doing so, they also have this sense of uh, love, whereby when one auntie didn't come, they will start saying, hey, what happened? And then we, we find out, whether she's ill or not, then uh, we even go to the house to visit. The fifth pillar of Total Defence focuses on psychological defence and is about encouraging loyalty and commitment among Singaporeans and to develop the resilience to overcome challenges facing Singapore. One such challenge was thrown to Jeff Chong when he saw a poll that ranked Singaporeans among the unhappiest and most emotionless people around the world. The 37-year-old advertising firm Vice President decided to put his professional skills to good use to combat this perception. He wanted to show that Singaporeans are multi-dimensional individuals. The result was a social documentary series titled Singaporean of the Day. My motto is just to give 
the best when you're doing something. The series profiles Singaporeans with interesting backgrounds and showcase their hopes and dreams. Over 30 such videos have been made, and Jeff hopes to reach 50 to mark Singapore's Golden Jubilee in 2015. The project has inspired people to step forward and volunteer their time to make the series. The reason why this is important is because um, uh, I believe um, this is the, the Singapore I live in, um, and it is my right to protect it. Uh, and and it, if it is within my means and my ability, uh, because storytelling is part of my profession, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it, it, just, it just came naturally. The Defence Ministry says this type of day-to-day -day involvement of Singaporeans in total defence is critical, and this concept will likely see the role of the ordinary Singaporean become increasingly important as the country faces new obstacles. Total Defence is a framework for an integrated and comprehensive response for all kinds of challenges that Singapore may face. Uh, it was launched in 1984. That time, the focus was rallying Singaporeans in times of conflict. Over time, the scope has expanded to address all kinds of uh, challenges, including terrorism and pandemics. In recent years, we have been highlighting the importance of personal commitment to total defence in order to protect our home and our way of life. While military defence remains the cornerstone of Singapore's total defence strategy, the nation and its people have shown that there's more to fighting for the country than simply getting male residents to bear arms. It's a concerted effort to preserve the nation's peace and prosperity, not just the job of those in uniform, but those without. And this many-hands approach has seen the little red dot through some of its toughest times.